Hello, I'm Gary Bratsky. I'm going to be talking about OpenCV, the Open Source Computer Vision Library. I'll talk about what it is, where it's going, and implications for open source. Okay, what is OpenCV? It's the most popular computer vision library in the world. It's mature. It's uh, over 20 years old. It's free for research and commercial use. It has an Apache 2.0 license now. It's implemented in C++, but has interfaces in many languages, including Python, Java, and JavaScript. It's a comprehensive library, so it has a million lines of code, 70 plus modules, 2,500 algorithms. Of course, it can be compiled down to smaller amounts. It's been downloaded over 21 million times from SourceForge. From GitHub, we're getting about 10,000 downloads a week. And in Python, there's one to two million installs per week. So it's a big widespread community. It has a lot of support, courses, you know, Stack Overview overflow and other things cover it. It's actively developed. We have over 10,000 patches. We get about five patches a day from external developers. It's a robust and efficient library. So what's in OpenCV? What you can see, it has some high-level interfaces to make debugging easy, but it, inside it spans everything from image processing to deep learning, calibration, some of the popular stuff, fitting, transform, optical flow, segmentation, features, SLAM, RGB, you know, color plus depth is, is being increasingly supported, computational photography, and beneath this is a core of data structures and other things that serve it. So OpenCV's history started in 1998 when I joined Intel and got the idea for giving everyone a common infrastructure to accelerate the field of computer vision. Our first release came out at Computer Vision and Pattern Recognition Conference, CVPR 2000. And from there, uh, I joined the Stanford team in the DARPA Grand Challenge. And CV was used extensively there, which really kicked off the autonomous driving industry. I'll talk about that later. Our first release in 2006, I'd moved to Willow Garage, and Willow Garage supported it along with a Russian contracting team that grew the library. In, in 2009, we switched from C to C++, and then in, in 2012 to GitHub. In 2015, uh, I saw major accelerations and access to AMD and NVIDIA platforms. Intel bought ITSYS, uh, the development team, uh, in 2016. So they, a portion of the team continues, about five people continue developing and also adding this to OpenVINO. 2016, we kicked off deep learning support with the DNN, deep learning, deep neural network module. Okay, in 2018, we went to OpenCV 4.0 and C++11 compliance, adding a lot of new things. In 2019, I started putting more energy into the foundation, and now we have a distributed, paid distributed teams around the world. We hope to be coming out with OpenCV 5.0, uh, at least in beta, by the end of the year, ARM support, and many other things. So let's look at OpenCV today. There's development groups in California and a lot of activity around that. That development group supports a team of now three people in Russia full-time on development. Intel supports about five people full-time on OpenCV development, so that's also happening in Russia. In Shenzhen, China, we ha now have a group that's two people full-time, but that's going to grow to five. I'll talk about that in the end. And there are companies there that are helping, especially with ARM optimization. So we're really going to work well with ARM. Also, there's a community of developers around the world from which we get two to five pull requests to be integrated in OpenCV per day. Okay, in 2020, we're celebrating our 20th year anniversary in OpenCV. You can see it at the page, OpenCV anniversary. Uh, 5.0 release should come out, as I said, at the end of the year. We also went and we switched from our uh, Berkeley source distribution library to Apache 2 because it has better patent protection. So that's now OpenCV is under Apache 2 license. We had a lot of uh, Google Summer of Code projects this year. They're all successful, plus two 
two projects from China that were supported there. So there was a lot added this year. Uh, we're focusing on optimization on edge devices, so phones to edge hardware, RISC-V support, and a lot of ARM focus. We now have a dedicated build farm for this hardware in China, especially ARM devices. We put up a whole bunch of courses. They span the intro to OpenCV to uh, using the deep neural network library, deep learning with OpenCV. And there's also the use of PyTorch and getting it to work with OpenCV. And, uh, so PyTorch learns and then you use it optimized on OpenCV over kind of any hardware you want. We now have a development partnership program where increasing number of people included us at the end. And we just recently opened the OpenCV store. Right now it's still under password, but that will open up for hardware and training. Okay. I mentioned that one of the key things that's happened is we now have full support for deep learning. This is accelerated on Intel. We, we had a Kickstarter for a, a Movidia smart camera that's now out and starting mass production in the coming, by December. OpenCV courses have sold well over a million dollars and uh, there's growing interest in China. We have a lot of deep learning solutions are being used. The, in, in Google's Media Pipe and also in OpenVINO, uh, we're adding increasing amounts of topologies that this the DNN library will support of as new nets, uh, you know, are introduced in conferences, and these run across uh, Movidius, the Intel hardware, NVIDIA, ARM, FPGA, and RISC-V. There's a lot of new algorithms that have been added from 3D vision to computational photography to color calibration, all kinds of things, machine vision and data augmentation also in machine learning. Uh, OpenCV joined the Google Summer of Code as it does every year and this year there were 14 projects added to OpenCV just scanning from left to right by row. We have Julia bindings, we have much improved and faster JavaScript interface, Macbeth color chart detection, we've sped up OpenCV in general, added state-of-the-art ransack algorithms, we have a very good robust tracker, there's faster and more accurate text detection. SIFT is now out of patent, so it's joining the core of OpenCV as a robust feature detection. There's large-scale depth fusion and web demos of how to run deep networks on browsers. So other notable recent additions are OpenCV DNN uh, is uh, now optimized on ARM using the Tengen and Tengen Lite. It's also further optimized on CUDA, and we've added more RISC-V optimization. We also added interfaces with Objective-C and Swift bindings for iOS support. There's multiple new supported uh, deep network topologies for inference in OpenCV, and uh, we're adding color calibration. With the Macbeth chart detection, we're also allowing color rebalancing. So the major features coming out with OpenCV 5.0 are um, we're moving to C++14 support, a much better Python API, better UI and visualization. We're going to have a comprehensive 3D module with the state-of-the-art RANSEC in it. As default, there's a lot of deep net improvements coming that are faster and ONNX supporter is getting more robust. First class ARM support and RISC-V support. Audio support is coming also and much more thorough testing. What's the impact of open source on the global scientific and technical community as seen through OpenCV? For one, OpenCV made the early conference papers repeatable. Before it was their own local brewed code, it was very difficult to recreate experiments. And then we could get it more scientific by being able to repeat the experiments because they were built on a common infrastructure. It enabled people to advance the field also instead of reinventing common algorithms. In education, it spread uh, best coding practices around for people who dug into the code. And it allowed students to contribute code and then show their work to employers, which helped them. OpenCV also saved 
saves time. It allows rapid experimentation and that itself advances the field. It's enabled many new companies and technology groups by allowing them to build on debug code. So I'm going to give an example of OpenCV's use and acceleration in the field of autonomous driving, although it spans many fields. So here we see the DARPA Grand Challenge, and I'll just skip quickly. This was what kicked off autonomous driving, and there's Boss leaving. I'll skip ahead to Stanley leaving. So they were time trials. They kept the cars separate, but each was running a, a time track. Okay, so this is the map over a large desert area of where the vehicles were. As we can see, this is when Stanley passed um, the CMU car, Boss. You can see it there. And then I'll just show some examples of coming down the, a, a mountain cliff area. So there's a big drop off started in a canyon. And so this is the kind of driving. There was no, no one in the car. The truck behind was allowed only to stop the car. And, and this went on and on until this is the uh, uh, finish, uh, Stanley. The car from Stanford winning the DARPA Grand Challenge in 2005, which in effect kicked off the autonomous driving industry. OpenCV also supports image calibration, and we're vastly improving this now, allowing multiple uses of uh, fiducial boards, automatic calibration, or with, with all kinds of fiducial cards. Here's some tracking uh, OpenCV used in the film industry that we did. And so, you know, we're over able to cinemagraphically track so it's smooth and uh, looks like the objects are real in the scene. This is useful for automotive too. Here's some background subtraction to remove obstacles, as you see above, although this is more like a zoom application, but could be used in driving. Below is semantic segmentation of uh, a road scene. So there's road, sidewalk, people, vehicles, um, buildings, etc. Here is some agricultural technology, a tractor application. So you can see on the right, the, 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 well, on the left, the tractor is driving and tracking objects in the scene, and it has reconstructed this 3D point cloud of the field from driving around it. Um, this was calibration being done while in flight. So here's some tracking technology that's now in OpenCV, and you can see it's, it's quite robust under a, many types of objects. I think soon we'll see in automobiles and um, animal tracking, tracker, people, and also cars, uh, car identification and car tracking and car speed. So these are just examples of OpenCV in autonomous applications. Autom so I wanted to quickly go through the ecosystem. We have a nonprofit, opencv.org, that has the library and memberships and courses and whatever. And we have the for-profit that is doing consulting service, uh, product partnering, and blogs, newsletters, etc. Put out this OpenCV AI kit. It's a smart camera that sees in depth and, and does deep learning and computer vision on chip. That's going in mass production as of December. We're offering courseware. This will be expanded, but right now it's intro to computer vision, it's applications, including deep learning, and then with OpenCV and deep learning with PyTorch. These are some of the things with OpenCV. We have a gold sponsorship. We have partnerships with different companies. There's several in right now uh, throwing in development. And there's a hardware program where if you have hardware that's chips or cameras, you can join us. And, and finally, we have this new store that's just opening to sell these things. Okay, so I wanted to put in a plug for the OpenCV China. In Shenzhen, we have a group and uh, it already has two full-time workers. I'm an advisor and Vadim is coming as soon as he can get into China from Russia. And they'll be hiring a couple more people you can use the barcode or contact them through the email on lower left. How do we help open source technologies to build global international community? One of the first things is to be able to provide stable funding, so international grants, so that projects can run internationally. That's what we're trying to do in OpenCV. You know, Google Summer of Code has an offsite internship program that I think could be lifted, and you know, as long as there's funding, it could be OpenCV or open source Summer of Code. I think communities, the governments can 
can build office spaces or, or associated with universities or labs where people can take breaks and just work on it, kind of their own or sponsored sabbaticals. And then I think we can do funded challenges to benefit humanity. Let's say a, a big challenge, let's work on, say, energy, food production, environmental cleanup, clean water, accelerating robotics or space exploration, create a challenge, and then fund the open source community to develop technologies to help these challenges. That's it. Any questions?